What up gamers, Laz here, and today we're going to talk about my recommendations of weapons and mods for your fire team to bring into the opening 24 hours of the Vault of Glass. The Vault of Glass is returning next season to Destiny 2, and with that return, hopefully brings another active contest modifier for the first 24 hours. Hopefully the suggestions I'm going to make will help you out during your first Destiny 2 experience of the Vault of Glass. Let's start out with some primary weapons. The Ikelos SMG. Okay, let's be real. Even if this SMG didn't make Warmind Cells, it would still be one of the best primaries in the entire game. But the fact that it can also make Warmind Cells makes it S tier in almost all content. Death Adder. I have a deep love for 900 RPM lightweight SMGs. They just feel amazing, in my opinion. And much like the Ikelos SMG, this is also another top tier primary weapon. And if I pair this particular role with a certain armor mod, I'd still be able to create Warmind Cells. But more on that later. Palindrome. A few things here. One, I don't really have any other Void primary weapons that I'm overly confident in. Two, I think One For All is a highly underrated perk and I think people will see its value during contest modifier content. And three, it's a hand cannon and this is Destiny, so I might as well go with it, right? Moving on to special weapons. First in, last out. To be honest, I highly doubt I'll be using this shotgun, but if a double slug DPS situation pops up, I just want to be ready. Speaking of double slugs, Heritage. This will be the other slug shock and I will be using if the hot swap DPS strat is in fact needed. Succession. This legendary sniper is quickly becoming one of my favorites in the game just because of the reconstruction perk alone. Having Vorpal is a nice touch to help with champions, majors, and bosses. So yeah. Supremacy. If I feel like the slow fire rate of Succession is a bit much, I'll swap out to this ugly ass weapon which also performs extremely well in shorter DPS situations. And here's some of the heavies I'll be bringing in as well. Falling Guillotine. Swipe, 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 spin to win. I just can't see it not having some sort of value, so I'm 100% planning on bringing this sword in. The Seventh Seraph Saw. Much like the talk earlier about Warmind Cells, that's the way I'm leaning with this LMG as well. I'm not expecting it, but if I'm asked to have an LMG for general ad clear, I'd also like it to have the best ad clear in the game, which is Warmind Cells. Code Duello or Royal Entry. I have yet to get a good royal entry, so I'm just going to talk about Code Duello. Rockets got a buff at the beginning of Season of the Chosen, and with that buff, they also received a new perk called Lasting Impression. That perk, paired with auto-loading holster, makes rockets very good in multiple situations. To top it off, if you can hot swap from your rocket to something like Izanagi's Burden, you've got yourself some top-tier damage output. Threaded Needle. To be honest, I wasn't even going to put this in the video, but I'm actually bringing it in. And I know. I know. Linear fusion rifles are complete trash currently, but I have a plan and a use for this if the situation presents itself, so it'll be in my back pocket as a in case of emergency break glass type of weapon. You've probably noticed that I haven't talked about any exotics yet, so let's take a look at those now. Anarchy. Literally just bring this weapon into everything that exists inside of Destiny and you're already prepared for basically everything the game can throw at you. Izanagi's Burden. This is still one of the best damaging weapons out there, and it's also in my top 3 favorite exotics in all of Destiny, so she's coming in with me. Xenophage. Alright, to be completely honest, I cannot stand this gun. It's subpar at everything it does. Its popularity comes from its ease of use, and it only really becomes mildly good when it gets paired with Divinity. Speaking of Divinity, this is an extremely useful exotic, but Anarchy does not stick to the bubble that Divinity creates, so if your group plans on running a lot of Anarchies, I'd recommend either delaying your Divinity application or trying to place your Anarchy shots on a separate part of the boss from where the Div bubble is. Tractor Cannon! Yep, yeah, yep, yep, Tractor. This little badass applies the same buff as Divinity, but this homie suppresses enemies and hard yeets them across the room. Wither Horde. It's a spawn trapping and ad controlling monster. It also has the potential to make more mind cells if you know what you're doing. Whisper of the Worm. All right, straight up. Is it even a D2 day one raid if Whisper isn't on your team? I think not. Even though I don't think it'll get used at all by anybody, I'm bringing it in. Just cause Whisper deserves to be in every day one raid race. You know what they say, respect your elders. There's a few other weapons I'm planning on bringing in, but it's as one single loadout, so I waited till now so I could group them all together. Time War Inspire. 
I honestly don't think I'll be using this pulse rifle, but if the situation presents itself, I'm going to pull this guy out. The more likely weapon I'll be running here is Escape Velocity. Like I said earlier, 900 RPM lightweight SMGs have a special place in my heart, and this one has some serious ad slaying capabilities that I think most people may have forgotten about. And to pair with this weapon in the energy slot, I'll be running Truth Teller. Blinding nades. If the ads seem a bit too aggressive for you to handle, or if there's just a ton of them around, blinding them so you can mow them down without fear of being attacked will be massive. Do not underestimate the power of blinding nades. Don't forget, not all of these weapons could be viable in every situation. So being prepared to pull something else from your vault and having it ready to go is going to give you an advantage in the long run. Adaptation will be one of your best friends during a day one raid. Let's talk armor mods. Charged with light mods. Protective light. If you've watched any of my GM guides, then you know what I'm about to say. In my opinion, this mod is a must if you're doing anything that has the contest modifier enabled. Getting a 50% damage reduction once it procs is massive in keeping you alive and potentially saving your team from using a res token. Taking charge. The only way to utilize the charge with light mods is to somehow become charge with light first. My go-to is taking charge. Picking up one single orb of power will give you one stack of charge with light. And making orbs is extremely easy to do. So in my opinion, this is one of the most consistent ways to become charged with light. Reactive Pulse. This mod has a ton of utility in helping you stay alive. And if paired with another arc mod, you'll gain an overshield whenever you do a finisher. Charged Up. Although there's other ways to increase your total stacks of Charged with Light, I prefer using Charged Up because it has zero negative effects from running it. War Mind Cell Mods. Now it's time for the juice. Cellular Suppression. Shooting. Not blowing up, but just shooting one bullet into a war mine cell will emit a concussive void blast that blinds and suppresses nearby enemies. Global Reach. Not only does it extend the radius of the explosions a war mine cell makes when you blow them up, but it also extends the radius of the suppressive blast that cellular suppression makes when you shoot the war mine cell. Fire Team Medic. Blowing up a war mine cell emits a burst of healing for you and nearby allies. That burst is based on where you are, not where the war mine cell was when you destroyed it. Two people on my day one deep stone crypt team used this and it was fantastic. Wrath of Rasputin. Solar splash damage has a chance to create war mine cells. Remember what I said earlier about Death Adder creating war mine cells? Well, seeing as Death Adder is solar and mine has Dragonfly, the solar explosions from Dragonfly have a chance to create war mine cells. Same thing applies to other weapons like Xenophage, 1000 Voices, even the explosive head perk on solar bows, and any solar grenade in the game. War Mines Protection. I didn't do the testing myself, but according to Reddit, Warmind's protection allows you to take 50% less damage from enemies that are near Warmind cells. Thinking about that number being paired with something like Protective Light just sounds amazing to me. Warmind's longevity. The longer a Warmind cell can exist out in the arena, the more times that one singular cell can be used to proc something like Cellular Suppression. Kind of sells itself, right? My personal choice of mods that I plan on loading into the raid with is Taking Charge, Protective Light, Cellular Suppression, Global Reach, and War Mines Protection. Obviously, there's too many mods here to run all of them yourself, so I think using a healthy mix between you and the rest of your fire team will be your best option. I stream fairly regularly on Twitch, and I will be live with my team's first run in the opening 24 hours of the Vault of Glass. Link is down in the description. And that's that! Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, leave a dislike if you didn't, drop a comment down below and let me know what your team is bringing into the raid. I should probably say something here about subscribing, uh, I think you get the point. And Laz, out. Ah.